Master caution, elect Gen 1 fault. Elect generator 1 fault, that is confirmed with generator 1 fault on ECAN and fault light overhead panel generator 1. My radio, ECAN actions. Okay, I agree. Generator 1 off then on. Stand by. Okay, we have thrust lock. Looks like we've lost the auto thrust, taking manual thrust. Manual thrust. Flight directors off. Bird on. Read ECAM. Master warning, auto flight, autopilot off. Clear auto flight. Clear auto flight. And elect emerge config. Elect emerge config. ECAM actions. Min rat speed 140 knots. You're well in excess of that. Generator 1 plus 2 off then on. Elect generator 1 off. And on. No change. Fault light remains. Generator 2 off. And on. No change. Still a fault light. If unsuccessful, bus tie off. Bus tie off. Generator 1 plus 2 again. Off then on. Generator 1 off. And on, no change. Generator 2, off. And on, no change. Engine mode selector ignition. VHF1 use. Mayday, 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 Barton 9 Alpha Charlie. Electrical malfunction, request to maintain flight level 320, heading 335 degrees. Stand by for intentions. Fuel, fuel gravity feed. Procedure gravity fuel feeding. FAC 1 off then on. Flight controls FAC 1 off and on to recover the rotor trim. Bus tie auto. Electric bus tie back to auto. APU available, start. Unfortunately, we've dispatched with an unserviceable APU today, so continue ECAM. Blower plus extract override. It's ventilation, blower, override, extract, override. Clear electric. Clear electric. Uh, flight control, alternate law, protections lost, max speed 320 knots. Clear flight control? Clear flight control. Auto flight, auto thrust off. Clear auto flight? Clear auto flight. And uh, APU fire loop A fault. Clear APU? Clear APU. Uh, land ASAP in red. And status? There are no OEBs, no circuit breaker resets, and no checklist to consider at this time. Continue recap, read status. Min rat speed 140 knots, max speed 320 knots, max brake pressure for landing 1000 psi, fuel gravity feed, avoid negative g factor, and then we have a note about avoiding icing conditions. Approach procedure for landing, use flap 3. Approach speed, be V ref plus 10, or a minimum of 140 knots and there's a landing distance procedure to apply. Alternate law, protection lost. When landing gear down, direct law. Cabin zone at fixed temp, and the slats and flaps are slow. Check. In op systems, I'll just pull out the pertinent points. Yes, please. Uh, no reverses. Both rad outs are in op, so there is no auto call out. No autopilots, no auto thrust. The landing, no anti skid, no nose wheel steering. And that's about APU. That's the ECAM action complete. Okay, so maintaining flight level 320, currently heading 335 degrees. Uh, we have spoken to ATC about that. I'm not going to put the cabin crew on station at this time. Let's just uh, consider uh, a T Doda. Time wise, 
fuel is not an issue. We have normal fuel burn, seven and a half tons, fuel endurance not a problem. We have a red land ASAP, so we need to find a nearby safe, suitable place to land the aircraft. Once the ECAM actions are completed, the pilot monitoring will then refer to the corresponding electrical emergency config summary. Uh, this is broken down into phases of flight and gives a guidance on the main limitations and flight capability of the aircraft and can be used in the decision making process for the crew. First we will look at the cruise phase. Fuel. During the ECAM procedure we established our fuel gravity ceiling and we know we can main flight level 320 for the remainder of the flight. There is a note about the centre tank being unusable by gravity. Given we are in the later stages of the flight at this point there is no fuel remaining in the centre tank. The last note for landing distance performance drives us towards the QRH or the appropriate performance tool. The overriding point here being is that the landing distance is going to be considerable. Well, let's take a look at the approach considerations. Uh, we are cap to in up, which is a rather backwards way of saying we're cap one only. Uh, we have a minimum rat speed of 140 knots. Uh, below that, the rat will stall. We need to consider the configuration timing on the approach. The slats and flaps are slow. For landing, we're going to use flap three. And very importantly, when the landing gear goes down, the flight controls will revert to direct low, and we need to use manual pitch trim. Next, we'll look at the landing part of the summary. These points here are primarily concerned with the handling of the aircraft. For flare, only two spoilers are available per wing. This is just another way of saying that three are in op. So we have two available and the ailerons on each side. Worth mentioning at this point that both radouts are inoperative, so the cues for flare may not be there, so callouts could be made by the pilot monitoring. The next points here relate to the deceleration of the aircraft. Obviously we have no reverses. For braking, we are alternate without anti-skid and the max brake pressure should be modulated to 1000 psi. And finally, due to the loss of both BSCUs, we have no nose wheel steering. Uh, the final consideration is for the go around. While not specifically stated, uh, the go around will be in direct law, so the pilots need to consider their handling and the pitch power coupling. Uh, the QRH summary mentions that when the landing gear is uplocked, the aircraft will improve, it will upgrade the flight controls to alternate law with protection lost.